What's going on? All right, very quickly, get it out of the way at the start. Uh, if you have any questions um, regarding any of the lingo we use here, strategy, uh, free trials, stuff like that, go to wallstreetjesus.com. I just posted the site in the chat. All right, you'll see the uh, different packages we have here on the home page. Uh, also, if you click on the product section, uh, that's where you would find a master course if Lucci's offering it, uh, as well as the private Twitter feed. If you were lo just looking for that. Uh, and what else? Market updates. A lot of times pre-post market. Some of the more interesting activity or maybe some of the names you guys like to play. Talk about action a little bit. And also, if you go to strategy, the strategy tab up at the top, um, you know, quick, easy to read blog type write-ups uh, explaining what it is exactly we do, why we do it, and the terminology and all that stuff. All right, so let's talk some shop. All right, interesting finish. I mean, not like we haven't seen this story before, but uh, you had mRNA yesterday. The market was strong pre, you know, before the mRNA news uh, yesterday anyway, off Powell, uh, 60 Minutes and all that stuff. But uh, it gave it an added boost, right? Gave it an added boost, uh, gave a reason for them to squeeze some shorties. Uh, and it all fed into the squeeze yesterday. Okay, only fitting, I don't know, you know, how legit um, the write-up is that came out regarding mRNA this afternoon, the negative write-up, but it only makes sense to take some, shave some of that off yesterday's rally. Um, you know, if there's some negativity towards uh, the, the drug that everybody's hoping and waiting on, all right? So I wouldn't look too much into it. Uh, it was quite, action was quiet as a whole the second half of the afternoon and uh, you know any positive or negative news probably would have a, a decent impact uh, just because it, it seemed quiet and not too liquid you know you had things moving around but not a lot of action out there all right uh, to catch to get you guys caught up uh, some of you who are not members Okay, uh, we, you know, we have a Sunday webinar, which we opened up uh, to everybody for a couple weeks there. Uh, we went over a couple things, uh, just talking about how nothing's really changed here for us. Okay, based on the signals we look at, and generally that's all sweeper activity, sentiment, you know, what, what the smart money, the money out there that knows a lot more than you and I, and are wired a lot differently than you and I in this game, um, how they're positioning it, all right? And then we make, we come up with a game plan off that. And our game plan has been the same, right? We talked about that on the uh, Sunday webinar. Since the start of earning season, okay, uh, to put it in simple English, and I don't wanna make it sound too easy because it's never as easy as it sounds, but basically what we wanted, our goal, Okay, our main goal was to stay tactical, meaning don't get too greedy, right? If the market gives you, you know, a decent profit, short amount of time with less risk, now would be a time you want to take that rather than lean towards that added risk and, and look for more, okay? And, you know, there are reasons for that. A lot of the, the good stuff out there, a lot of the names that have been catching the best action, a lot of the names which have had the best price action are cooked, plain and simple, right? A lot of these things have had sick runs. And the majority of you out there, myself, we've played quite a few of these names. We've made money with these names, but you just, you can't keep buying the same stuff over and over and over again at higher levels that's where you give, you give the money back, all right? So that on top of earnings season, it was the start of earnings season I'm going back to here, 
the added risk of earnings, okay? And simply put, if let's say, again, I'm using examples. You see some flow in NVIDIA, okay? And the flow looks good, the stock looks good. You can't find a thing wrong with it and you wanna hold it for a swing overnight and AMD reports in that interim and AMD is a awful reaction to guidance or numbers. Chances are, I don't care what kind of flow a NVIDIA caught or how good it may look on a chart to you or whatever it is um, you're handicapping off of, the likelihood it's gonna take down the whole group, including NVIDIA with it, all right? So that's an added risk uh, that comes into the equation, all right? So based off all that, um, we wanted to remain tactical, quicker, nimbler, okay? But the most important part was, okay, to utilize weakness to our advantage, okay? And the reason for that, big picture wise, right? The backdrop, uh, the sentiment backdrop that we were seeing in regards to positioning, you know, shorts, all that stuff, sharpies, right? All the stuff we look at, uh, was this, our signals were still telling us to lean bullish, right? And look for long opportunities because there should be buyer support, all right? So the playbook simply put, if I draw it on the screen here, is to wait on these pullbacks. And I'm talking swings now, right? So you wait on these pullbacks and that is where the best risk reward is for swing trading, okay? Now, again, there are names that they march to the beat of their own drum, right? Some, you catch a name, it catches some news, it can go up without the market. It couldn't give two shits, right? All right, but overall, the best trades and the high probability bets that you place on the long side are gonna come when you have the wind at your back. Okay, relying on a name to outperform the actual, the indices, you know, you're asking a lot. Is it possible? Of course it is. Okay, but if you're looking, when you're looking for high probability plays, high probability bets, you want as much as you can to line up. All right. So we wanted to take advantage of weakness, look for sweeper activity, look for new names that catch action into that weakness. Okay, and then lighten up, roll, raise stops, whatever it is, into strength. Okay, and again, the logic behind it, you understand the, the buying the downside, the upside being capped in a sense. Again, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know the upside is going to be capped, right? We have no idea, but... What our, what our signals, the stuff we look at on a day-to-day -day basis, what they were showing us is that there's some decent heat out there, okay? As far as sentiment's concerned, price action is concerned, all right? So the likelihood is, is if, even if you get a strong move from this pullback, okay, when you get back to these levels, what's going to happen? You're going to have short-term sentiment hot, right? You're gonna have the put the call hot and sectors and names that have been on fire throughout this whole process, if they go higher, they're even more cooked, right? It's even an even worse risk reward, all right? So that's the logic behind um, why we wanna stay tactical and nimble here, okay? It's not like we have some crystal ball that's telling us, oh yeah, there's a brick wall here and you're never gonna get through it. We obviously don't have that access to that type of information, all right? But this game is all about probability and odds, and the odds are that sentiment and price action gets a little too heated at the top end of the range. All right, so even if it goes a bit higher from there, that's not where we want to look for entries, right? We want to look for entries from here. This, this is where we, we can feel most confident Again, that's where the, the best risk reward for the current environment's in. Um, and we want to try to stick to that. Okay. And listen, again, it's easier said than done, right? I'll give you an example. Today, coming into today after a day like yesterday, right? 
I did some buying swing. I'm talking about swings now. We could talk about day trading if you want and how you would look at the same playbook. Um, it fits that as well. But for swing trading purposes, I did some buying on the last dip. All right, a couple of names. I had no intentions of swinging anything out of today. You know, as a matter of fact, I came into today reminding myself, you know, short-term sentiment's a little bit hot. You know, you really, you really, you really got to find something that checks all the boxes for you to take a shot here. Otherwise, it's not worth it. All right. And, you know, I had no intentions, but this afternoon, I've been playing the Twitter, mostly day trading, quick trading in it, or spec action. I've been waiting for those Elliott type sweepers to show up, right? Because they usually show up in a big way. And today, this afternoon, they came in and they hit September calls. So I felt that even if the market does have a little quiet time or a little downside here, I'm okay with these Twitter September position at this spot and willing to add to it, you know, if it comes down to the lower end of this range, all right? So, you know, that, that's a decision that I made, right? I, I knew my risk. I knew the, the whole backdrop. It's not like I'm playing sloppy, but I really wanted to be impressed by any action that I was going to open up any new risk here over the short term. Okay, so again, you use it, you know, everybody wants to be so mechanical, right? Like a robot. But the, the bottom line is this stuff is over the long run, if you stick to it and you get better at these things each and every time you're pressing buttons, okay, that's where you're going to see the impact on your P&L. Right? You, you, you're not going to see true results off one or two times you know, playing off an edge like this. This is something over the long haul. And if that's your goal to find some consistency over the long haul, okay, this is the stuff you got to work on each and every day. All right. And just I'll give a, another quick example while we're talking about this uh, now that uh, we spoke a little bit about where we are as a, as a setup as a whole. But I'll give an example, okay? Like a lot of new people who sign up for, you know, the trial or membership to the Steam Room, they come in, you know, they look at the board. They're not even really paying attention to my commentary. They're looking at big orders, hitting the board. Yeah, they don't want to really know if it's clean, if it's not clean, if it's a block or it's a sweep. And they, they basically want to look for names they like and they want to buy them whenever they're going to buy them and sell them whenever they're going to sell them and make money that way, you know? Or, you know, they, they almost have an impression that if the order's a big bet, that instantly means it's smart money, right? It's somebody extremely wealthy that never loses. And that couldn't be f further from the truth, okay? The edge at a sweeper activity and sentiment is, is simple. And once you see it, you will understand, you know, what you need to do to implement it into a strategy that you're comfortable with, okay? Let's say Twitter right here, right? Twitter has basically, no matter what you think, I don't care what your bias is, okay? Twitter has what? A 50-50 chance of trading higher or lower, right? Keep it simple. So 50% 50, 50 chance it goes up and 50% chance you're going to lose money on the trade, okay? Now, we come in 50-50 on Twitter. Now we come in to Monday and we see some sweeper activity come into the name, right? So if, you don't, if you're not familiar with sweeper activity, then you have no idea. But if you have... You know, if you follow me on Twitter or have any idea in regards to sweeper activity, what would you say? All right, off the top of your heads, all right? Somebody buys Twitter calls. Some aggressive sweepers come in buying Twitter calls. They knock the percentage, right, 
of the stock going higher and you make money, what would you say? 10%? Okay, that's fair, Nick. 60%, all right? Now, whether you, whether you think it or not, you already have an edge. If that's what you truly believe, okay? If that's what you truly believe, and the reason you believe it is maybe you traded off sweepers or you've seen sweeper activity and how it works and or you followed me on Twitter or whatever the case may be, okay? If you truly believe that your sweeper activity that came into Twitter increases the odds 60, 40 now, okay? That's an edge right there, all right? But I want to show you how, you know, other things, other factors, other things we look at, how it can even nudge the odds even more in your corner, okay? So we got, now let's take this off, right? I'm like, I feel like I'm a math teacher here, right? 60, 40, Nick says. And no one's going to argue with Nick because I'll knock your jaw into Afghanistan. All right. So now you got 60-40. Now, Nick, right, you're a member of the steam room, okay? And why are you a member? Not for options flow, okay? Because I'm being honest with you. If you want just to see options flow, I can set you up with a free scanner, and you can see every block, sweep, anything that comes in, I'll hit the scan, and you can guess whether it's clean or not, whatever the hell it is, and it's free, okay? But the reason, and, and this is the point, because a lot of members don't realize this, especially when they, when they sign up. The reason why you are a member, okay, is not because of the data, it's not because of the flow. It's because somebody like me, okay, with 25 plus years experience, is wasting their time I'm wasting my time sitting in front of the order flow all day long and figuring out to the best of my ability what order may be clean, what order may be tied, what order rolls, right? Okay, so that's why you remember, just in case you didn't know that. So let's say now I tell you guys that Elliot. Okay, this looks like Elliot type action to me. Okay, so now it's not just call buying, right? We just saw a sweeper activity in Twitter, right? Several of us played it Friday to Monday, had a quick rip in it. We couldn't wait to, to get the hell out of it. The thing's a pig, right? Hasn't done a thing this stock. But now we've been talking about waiting on for the Elliott sweepers and how they were gonna look different. And we'll talk about Twitter and I'll show you, you know, the flow later, that's irrelevant, okay? So now if just regular sweeper activity made it 60, 40, okay? I don't know about you guys, but if I feel it's real deal sweeper activity, at the least, at the least, this goes to 65, if not 70, okay? At the least, I mean, I'd put it at 70, but you know what? I'm going to be conservative, 65, okay? And this goes to 35. All right? So that's the edge of the sweeper activity right there, right? Where I say it's a missile or the most aggressive action. You guys know what I'm talking about. The top shelf type activity that we get excited about, okay? That's what it's going to do. It's going to, it's going to give you an edge of 65-35 instead of that 50-50 split. Now, okay, what if I told you, Nick, and I know you see this more and more every day, okay? What if I told you the squeezometer is trading at 30% bulls when this action came in? Now, now, what do you think? Right? Okay, but you, you understand what I'm trying to get at now? Right? What if I told you this sweeper activity, this Elliot action came in 
when our tactical trader sentiment is at or in the green, near or in the green. Okay, right, in the green zone, right? All of a sudden, right, depending on how you feel, maybe you prefer the squeezometer in the 30s, right? You say, okay, you know what? That bumps it up to 70. Oh, a tactical trader sentiment's in there too? That's good for at least a trade. So, you know, let's bump it up to 75. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's, that right there, I'm showing you, I'm breaking it down, that's the edge out of this action. There's still, this, this never goes to zero, ever in this game. You guys know that. We'll never, ever go to zero. It's impossible. Okay? But this is the edge out of all the stuff we look at, right? And then if I throw in, right, this is the last ingredient, another key factor. Sharpies are long and riffraff is short as a backdrop. That's got to go into the equation. Right? Just as if riffraff were long and sharpies were short, it would, it would affect the probability as well. So that's, that's, the, that's the edge in this stuff. Okay? That's why it's worth paying attention to this stuff. No other reason. No other reason. You know, you're never going to find something, a formula that's going to get it to 100% to zero. There's no such thing. Not even close. All right, but you see with your own eyes because you guys are even throwing the numbers at me. You know, if more things line up, you know, the the better the odds of of you cashing a ticket. All right, and that's once you see that and realize that, okay, you start to see the light. Okay, you don't you don't become a master trader, but you start to see the light. You understand your edge, right? If you were somebody that came into the steam room just looking at big bets that are hitting the board, you know, this is a whole different, a whole different story compared to that. You know, but that is, that's the edge that I try um, to show you guys, you know, each and every day. I could very easily just, you know, give a blanket statement on what sentiment's doing as a whole or, and, you know, it'd be less confusing to you. It'd be easier for you to understand, but not everything always lines up. And there's different, right? There's different risk reward for a different climate, for a different situation. Sometimes they all line up. Sometimes some of them line up. Sometimes only one lines up. All right. And then once you, figure out the proper bankroll management behind it, okay? There's no doubt in my mind you're going to see a huge impact as far as your PNL is concerned, right? Because no matter what we just showed here, if you go in and buy Twitter, right, and you cash your ticket, you made a nice hit, okay? But then uh, Pinterest catches action next week with less favorable odds, right? Because you don't have as many things behind you, let's say. And you put, you know, you end up losing double the amount in Pinterest, right? So you can see how important, obviously, that is as well. You know, it's just as important. But, you know, once you figure out that stuff, you're never, you're never going to be you're never going to be satisfied. I'm doing this a long time. I'm never satisfied. You know what I mean? You're always going to try to get better, get more discipline, you know, but you're missing the most important, the most important thing to acknowledge here is that as you work on getting better at these things, you're, you're going to, money's going in your pocket. You understand? Less money's going out of your pocket. The more you try to work and improve on these things. All right, does, does anybody have any questions, especially those of you who are members? I mean, everybody sees what I'm talking about as far as an edge is concerned? All right, that's why nobody could tell you, oh, yeah, you know what? I don't think you should buy Twitter. You know, I don't like this or that. Nobody should be able to tell you anything. You should be able to look at it, 
and say, all right, you know, I got short-term sentiment. Eh, it's not there yet, but I got this, I got this. It's worth the shot, you know? Maybe I'll leave some room I'll add if I'm early on it. That's your decision to make, nobody else's. But at least you understand, you know, what's going into the equation. What is the one six? That's not, these are DeMar counts, forget that. That's got nothing to do with anything. Those are DeMarc sequential TD countdown stuff. All right, so let's, um, let's take a look on that note. Let's take a look at the uh, Twitter action. But anyway, let's, let's talk about the market before we just brush it off, all right? So the reason why the playbook's important is because each and every climate we're in is different, right? You know, down here, okay, if you remember, we were talking about a lot, we were talking a lot about, you know, looking for n not only names, maybe spy or anything with some time, okay? Why? So we... We had the ability, if we want to, to milk it, okay? Maybe we were looking for more upside down here, all right? And if we're looking for more upside, you don't want to be in weeklies. You want to give yourself time to survive all these shakeouts and dips along the way. Because I can promise you one thing, even with time, you're not going to survive. I'm talking as full proof here of shit I sold with tons of time because... I couldn't sit through potential dips and pull back. All right. But that's a different environment than where we are here. You know, here it's different. We, we, in other words, buying with time is not as, not as a favorable risk reward as it was down here. Here we want to stay quicker. Whatever the market gives us, we want to take. Okay. We get a dip. We get a sell off. We're looking for entries there. Why? Because it did. Sharpies are long. Now, positioning is still thin. And that, again, that equates to odds. That tells us there's a higher probability of dips getting bought. Dips are going to be shallow, these pullbacks. Because nobody's in. They need to get in. All right? So it's the same exact thing. So those of you who are, we spoke about this Sunday, if you remember. If you're not a member, same playbook. Same exact thing we've been talking about for, for since the start of earnings season. I don't even know how long that is now. Okay. I think it's right around here somewhere. Let's take a look at the Twitter action. Did I, uh, let me send it to uh, private Twitter so I can get that. Hold on. What do I do with it? Oh. All right. All right, so you see Twitter, there was call activity in Twitter, spec, small spec activity. We were seeing a lot of it today, uh, short dated stuff, small sweeps, you know, throughout the day, nothing noteworthy. All right, but you see, here, you can't miss it, the action that came in. All right, late afternoon. Oops. And this is what the orders look like. Okay, so if you remember, the Twitter activity that we were calling spec activity, and if you remember me telling you that, just the orders will look different. The way it comes in will look different. Okay, instead of, you know, three, 400 lots of weeklies for 20 cents, right? You're going to see the size. You can't miss it, all right? These are just the top sweeps that came in late, okay? This top line, this top order here, if you take all the Twitter activity we've seen over the past three months, including the recent spec action, it still doesn't come out to this. Still. Okay. And same thing, right? You know, I, I don't know if they're Elliot. I call them out. Elliot's involved. 
and every stock that has had Elliot involved or in later down the road, Elliot got involved, we see sweeper activity like this many times. Okay. So whether it's Elliot, it's a group affiliated with Elliot, or maybe it's just coincidence. Okay. Whatever it may be. But the big guys who leave dents, they don't fool around in weeklies as much as you guys like to play them, right? We call them spec action. It's, it's, that's what it is. It's playing. People who, or who are betting in weeklies are playing. They're playing for a bounce with a small amount of money, okay? Action like this, all right, is making a bet on the name, right? They're making a bet on Twitter, okay? You're, they're not making a bet on Twitter, the company, if they're buying weeklies. You know, they could be, uh, maybe the market momentum is going to take Twitter higher, right? Maybe it's a shorty who's short, who's worried about a squeeze, who's sweeping weeklies, okay? This is different action. And like I said, it's with time. All right? The size, again, there, right? Aggressive activity. You saw there was, there was some blocks mixed in there. You know, it doesn't matter. They don't have to be all sweep. There were enough sweeps. But you can see just the wave of buying that came in, you know, with the size behind it. It was just different action. That's what I, when it, if you remember, we were talking about when the Elliott guys show up, you're going to notice the difference. You're not going to have to ask me if this is it, right? This is what, this is it. Okay, it was obvious. All right, these are just the largest sweeps. There were several other sweeps, all right? They actually added a little bit more um, after this as well, okay? This is what it came out to be at that time. 20, almost 27,000, 27,000, okay? And a VWAP, buck 75. And here's the breakdown, 45% of it at $1.77, 11% at 166. This is, you know, the sweeps broken up and what they paid. This is where all the transactions, uh, trade alert breaks it down, which is pretty cool. All right, but right, Kevin? I mean, we were looking at the Twitter action. You want you know you guys don't need, need me to go back a week ago and look at the Twitter action, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. The Twitter action a week ago, I mean, it, it's a joke. Again, it was worthy of a quick trade, right? It was worthy of a quick trade because we felt there was going to be momentum into the name, but it's different type of action, completely apples and oranges, different type of players. You know, different type of players. That's why, like, for me, okay, the stuff I want to swing, especially options related, okay, because I told you guys, I, I'm an, an equity guy my whole career. I still, to this day, feel more comfortable in equities. But that's why when I swing call positions, I do it one way that I feel comfortable and that I have had the most success. Okay, and that's simply picking and choosing from this type of activity. You understand? This type of activity. So in other words, I don't know if you guys noticed, but let's say um, the Twitter spec flow, okay? If I hold anything overnight as far as exposure, chances are it's going to be in equity. You know, and I'm looking to flip it the next day. I'm not buying 10 cent calls. You know what I mean? I'm not looking, like if I wanna be nimble, I know with the equity, I can be a lot more nimble. I don't have to deal with the spreads, the liquidity, I don't have to deal with anything. So if I'm making a play strictly on momentum, right? AKA weeklies, on me personally, the way I play, I'm looking to do it via equity. Okay, but 
if I see action like this and I want to take, you know, or build a decent position, I like to do with time. Okay. So I don't have to worry about every little tick up, down, this and that. That's why option players, you ever see every move up and down, they shit their pants. You know, if you have equity guys look at option guys, they look at you guys like you, you have eight heads. Every move up and down intraday. Oh, this is a bull trap. Oh, no. Oh, they trapped the bears now. Oh, no, no, no. Bull trap again. Bull trap again. What the fuck? There's traps all over the place. You ever realize that? Option players are nuts. Because every tick has such a big impact, especially if you're in weeklies. You know, some of you guys are playing like BKNG. As soon as you buy BKNG calls, you're down five bucks, three bucks off the spread, you're down. You already lost money. You don't even know it yet. So if you buy, if you get in BKNG and all of a sudden the market fades, has nothing to do with BKNG and, not, and that stock goes down with the rest of the market for a little bit, you know, you guys, you guys go nuts. Oh, they trapped the bulls. This could be a big one. This is the big one. I, can, I can't play that game. I'd lose my mind. I'd lose my mind completely. I wouldn't have anything left in the tank at the end of the day. I'd be done with all that stress. You know, I, I couldn't do it to myself. Plus, there, if you take a step back and look at that type of action, right, it's all luck. A lot has to do with luck, right? It's luck. It's luck. I mean, if you're looking to be that nimble, you know, in, in calls where you got to get every little tick right, that's, that's luck. So, you know, you, listen, you got to understand there's a lot of luck involved, but there's a lot of stress. And for me, I don't feel it's worth it, you know? Don't get me wrong. I, I like, I play intraday and I play equity. You know what I mean? But I'm, I don't panic. You know, I'm not getting flustered over each and every move. You know, because if a stock goes the other way, which happens often, I'm up and then all of a sudden the market fades and it takes down the stock with it, I get stopped out. You know what I mean? That's a common thing. It's not... You know, I'm not overanalyzing it, bull trap, bear trap. It's normal market gyrations. You know, it's part of the game. But for swings, I couldn't do that as well. You know, swings, you, I mean, you go back to anyone, Livermore, right? The biggest money is made by holding, right? Swing, when you swing positions, the reason you're taking on that added risk is so you can hold on longer and see more upside. You, when you try to have your cake and eat it too, and that's more upside, shorter amount of time, that's where things could get crazy. You know, that's where things could get crazy. But anyway, so that, you know, that's just my preference. Like this is the type of action I like to swing from. You know what I mean? That's the type of action I like to swing from. Sometimes both things line up. I'll give an example, BHC. I've been day trading the equity, but I'm also in Jan calls off that action. You know what I mean? So I'm not trying to squeeze it all in. I'm not, uh, uh, all right, I'm just gonna take a size position in BHC weekly to get to Jan's. You know, I'm trying to make a little money day trading the equity, but I'm sitting on Jan calls, you know, looking for more upside. Not looking to sell it into any little rip. Uh, ILMN, I didn't day trade. I sold the calls the same day because of how much it ran. I sold some of it. You know what I mean? But I, I, didn't, I didn't day trade ILMN. You know, the pricier ones, sometimes uh, the equity I, I don't really get involved in unless I think I could catch a big, big move. 
You know what I mean? It's not worth it. But so that's that's generally, um, you know, I don't know how I got into how I play, but I I, was, I think I was trying to make the point that uh, this is the type of action that I like to swing, not the spec action that was coming into Twitter. That's the stuff I like to scalp. So I, scalp sometimes is a bad impression, right? People think scalping nickels, ten cents. You know, I don't consider fifty cents or sixty cents in a short amount of time. A scalp, you know, maybe it is, depending on the price of the stock, I guess. But you know what I'm saying, you know. The stuff I play, the equity off of, I'm looking to play off the momentum more than the stock itself. And the stuff I swing, I'm choosing from the best action around. All right, and, and the same like we were talking about earlier, the more things line up, the better, right? So like, for example, if, we came into today with um, a favorable squeeze out or, or bullish sentiment signal over the short term. You know, that would make, you know, any, sh any short term swing that you guys were going to put on that much more favorable. And, uh, you know, you get more excited about it. But anyway, all right, so let's go. Anybody have any questions on anything? Uh, MNK, the puts look clean. Frank, honestly, I don't pay, I'm not paying attention to puts at all, you know? Sometimes I'll let you guys know, because I know, you know, quite a few of you like to play the put side. Um, if something's really, really aggressive, um, I'll make it, I'll make the point and let you guys know. Uh, but, you know, a $3 stock, I don't know. I know this thing got killed before, didn't it? Yeah, oh man, did it get killed. But they look clean, but don't hold me to it. I probably, if you really need to know, I probably need to dig a little deeper in it. Um, but, you know, like I, like I told you guys, like right now, with the, with the backdrop we have, I'm not puts, I can't even, you know what I mean? Puts shouldn't even be on the radar. It shouldn't be on the radar. If anything, you know, puts should be on an intraday basis only if you see the board lighting up red and there's no call buyers to be found, you know, and then you can play off the momentum. But for me, I, I don't see the risk reward is not there to the put side for me, you know, because I think the risk is to the upside. Now I told you guys, I'm more worried about the upside than the downside. There's nobody in equities. As a matter of fact, let me show you a couple of things what I got here so you guys can see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we could talk take two. I'm sick to my stomach over take two, but we could talk about it if you like. Here is... Just something you could get an idea of what's going on here, okay? Again, not even exact, basic idea, okay? Specs, riffraff, they're short. Uh, especially in futures, right? We know they're short. Okay? This is showing as well they're not even close to long, all right? But they've been short since here. For those of you who haven't been following along, all right, just so you understand, the riffraff right here. That's where they were all in short, Sharpies all in long. All right, and the bull bear indicator, which, you know, measures just positioning as a whole, zero from here, I think. Oh, no, no, not zero, but bullish signal from here, zero was the following here, I think. 
Okay, so that's where the bull boy indicator nailed the lows. Sharpies riffraff came off the first dip. I just, for those who haven't really been following along, so that's how long that positioning has been like that. The bull bear has been at zero to this day. Do you realize that? Still to this day. And Sharpie riffraff has been the same situation uh, since I showed you, all right? CTAs, low exposure, right? You could see where this can get to if it wants to. Uh, this is balanced mutual funds and ETFs, I think. These are ETFs. So there's been some ETF buying. Okay. Um, equity long short, that's hedge funds. Um, I don't know if this means they're long, but as far as we know, they've been short. I heard they did some covering yesterday. It looked like it by the price action. That doesn't mean they got long, but they covered some shorts. And risk parity funds, you can see still low. All right, so on top of mutual fund ETF flow, which goes a lot by price action, they come into the market. Everybody else who trades and decides whether they should get long or short are nowhere near to any significant exposure. All right, and that's, that's what creates these shallow dips. You know, that's what, if you get less headline risk out there, right? Like the vaccine, uh, the virus is somewhat under control or stuff like that, the, the dips will be even shallower, okay? But with headline risk, you might get some periods of weakness, but they still should be bought. But you know what I mean? They could be some weakness. It doesn't mean the market can't dip, all right? Where we were back where we were down here, that's a different story here, right? Well, here, you know, the reason why we wanted to get bullish, there was nothing positive out there. Everybody, including us, were bearish as can be, okay? But that was, that's the whole point. Everybody was positioned for further downside. Everybody. Okay, so up here, it's not the same where everyone's positioned, the same amount positioned for further downside. What's different here is they're just not positioned for upside at all. You understand the difference? Now the bull bear indicators, uh, from, from BOVA, hedge funds and um, all their clients and stuff like that. It's positioning as a whole over there. Ooh, let me get this off. All right, so that's, you know, that's basically, that, that tells the whole story. Now this tells the whole story. All right, at the lows, this was on the other side. It was short and whatever the case may be. Now things are starting to come over, but not in a significant way at all. Not in a significant way at all. I had one more to show you guys. Let me see here. I mean, we look at this stuff almost every night, at least every week, right? We look at this stuff. So this is positioning, okay? What's, what's hot right now, um, what I mentioned earlier where, you know, I had no intentions of buying in other words, not buying anything new, not selling everything, but not buying anything new. Um, oops, wrong one. Hold on a second. Is because from the squeeze yesterday, the short term heat was significant. So you had like to put the call was fried, right? We spoke about that, like stuff like that. But that can cool off rather uh, quickly. You know, that's from shorts getting squeezed and they're buying calls to uh, hedge their ass. Uh, this was Adam McElliott. I forget where all this comes from here. Hold on.
So very similar to the other one, right? Long short beta to the S&P 500. Short. You know, short. So again, if this money has to get, has to put on exposure, has to get long, you know, they're going to try to do it on dips. Anytime there's a dip, they're going to try to put money to work. Otherwise, they're chasing. And if they got to take off shorts, that's even more work. Like, I don't, can you imagine like being short throughout this period? Like, I can't even, how do you go home and lay your pillow at, at night and just relax? How, how could you do it? Like, how could, Sean, could you do it? Could you sit short throughout this? Like, like there's no way you could do it real, with real money. There's no way. You know, maybe you buy some puts and, you know, they're borderline worthless and you're just holding them because you have time. You know, you wrote them off. But can you imagine, like, adding to shorts? Because that's what they do. What they do is, you know, you, you get a bump, you add some short exposure here. You get another bump, you add some short. If you're betting this is a bear market rally, that's what they do. That's what they do. The riffraff, what they do is this here. Oh, shit, we're rolling over. Let me short. God damn it, they ran me over again. Oh, this is the big one. God damn it, they ran me over again. All right, third time's the charm. God damn it. All right? That's play by play. <laughs> That's play by play. And that's that right there, though, that's that's where we want to be, right? So we want to be right here when they're getting ready to, to run them over. That's what we're looking at. You know? That's why you see, like, the best of moves. Remember, sure, when we were talking about that? It feels like you feel the market is strongest when it comes off these dips. You know what I mean? It gets a little tired up here, right? Things start to thin out. But you could really feel the, the magnitude of the rally coming off these little dips. They're, you know, they're not even big dips. They're little dips. Uh, here's one more I got. Uh, these were today up, updates from today. So I think some of you members saw these already. But uh, where's this one here? And then we'll talk about some names and we'll wrap it up. Oh, look at this shit over here now. All right, so this is from Goldman and the risk appetite. Yeah. I mean, after this rally, you should be up here somewhere. But nobody believes in this rally, nobody at all. For good reason, but that's what's fueling this rally. That's what's fueling this rally. And God forbid things turn out the other way. You know what I mean? God forbid everything that everyone's predicting and so sure of. Oh, there'll never be a V-shaped recovery. No way. You're lucky if it's an L. You know, like they have a crystal ball. God forbid they start to play out a different way. These guys are in big, big trouble. You know, they're in big, big trouble. Who knows how it plays out, right? It's a virus. Nobody knows. But if they do, right, the Qs look like a V-shaped recovery. Not only that, you look at names, and we'll start to talk about that. You know, that's where the noise can really get to you. Like, you look at names. There are names out there you would think you're in a full-fledged bull market. And, again, we were talking about this Sunday. They make it out to be like it's just Fang or four or five names. There are so many names that look so healthy, some too healthy, right? Some of them look too healthy. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen Facebook. Like, every, Facebook got written off like, oh, Facebook, it's done, kaput. Look at this thing. You know, quietly, nobody talking about it, no hype behind it, no nothing. Now, I didn't even realize it until I looked at the, a chart and scrolled back a bit today. And said, holy shit, look at this. Facebook's at the highs here. 
Yeah, incredible. Software names out to wazoo, you know, do growth names all over the place. That was just the old economically sensitive value names that they actually bought yesterday that hasn't really participated. You know, that hasn't really participated. But you could see, like, there, there are names, you know, that, that just are, are a little bit crazy, right? Like, what, what is this Twilio going to do now? You know, I mean, Twilio is going to bust out from here. It's unlikely, possible, but unlikely. You know, the best case scenario for like a Twitter, not best case, but the probably the, the normal thing that it probably should do if it goes higher, go up, go down, go up, go down, go up. You know what I mean? Those type of new highs. Because of this. I mean, this is a monster move. You know, maybe if she breathes it out a little bit, and consolidate, then she can gear up for another move. But highs from here, you know, yeah, there's there's a lot. There's a lot of names. PayPal, you know, that that's part of the problem. You understand? That's part of the problem. So here you go. There, this is what I mean. Exactly what PayPal's doing. So you see, got out of there, but yank right back in there. You know, you have a big run. The likelihood it's going to rattle off something like this again, that doesn't, that doesn't happen a lot. That doesn't happen. You know, we used SE. We were going over Sunday as an example, okay? Like SE had that ridiculous move, a couple of them, ridiculous move. And then you see this, okay? Here was another big move in SE. Right here. Big move. And then, you know, look what she did here before this move higher. You know, that's healthy. That's healthy. It, yeah, like AYX doesn't look like that. You know what I mean? AYX hasn't had that big move yet. You know, AYX was a monster back here. Look at this. Monster. You know, but here been in a big range, right? And they've been, you know, just gliding higher now from here. Gliding higher. You know, but I'm not even, I didn't even mention some of the other names that were um, first to go, like these Zooms and, you know, the Teladoc. Even some of the smaller ones like that LVGO that Matt's been talking about in the room. Like, look at this. Look at this. Shop. You know, we, we, can't, we can't look to these things to make money on the swing side. These you look to clip, trade quick, you be as quick as can be, especially if they're down. You see some sweeper activity. These things go red, green, red, green, that type of thing. You know what I mean? Because people are trying to short it. So you get those squeezes. But to swing a position from here, up here now, yeah, that's, I can't do that. I can't do that. So again, that's why there's been, uh, like moon, I see moon, moon cows here out there. Like, that's what I meant when I said that, you know, underneath the hood, there'll be names that will, we can see alpha and outperform. But the market overall is going to be, you know, bullish, but choppy in a sense. There's almost like we bump our heads on the ceiling. Every time some of those things get too hot, we chill out a little bit. You know, but... The money, the money to be made is in these things, but they're so damn tough, you know? The only way is to buy them with time. These things, you know, Boeing, uh, all of them, you know, CAT, even names like URI. Now, these things haven't gone nuts.
they haven't gotten hurt yet. But they're tough. You know, they got a lot of headaches. They got headaches. And they're old names. You know, the the stuff we're seeing move, MDB, that those are new leaders. Right? They're new leaders. Like these are the stocks, any real dip, any pullback, we get pullbacks. You want to look towards these names and look for entries there. Yeah, software, but it's it's more than like software sounds like a small little sector. There's there's so many different types of software, Frank. You know, like packaged software is the, one of the hottest software groups, subsectors, like the D-Dog. You know, there's so many different types. So, but like D-Dog, you can't, you can't buy this here now. You can't buy D-Dog up here. I don't care what you tell me. You can't buy T Dog up here. Oh, uh, C D G R. Where do I know that name? S D G R. I mean, oh, this is right, 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 right. I think uh, this is another one Matt mentioned to me. S D G R. Yeah, recent IPO. It was another one too. A recent IPO that looked good. Yeah, biotechs, healthcare, drugs. They all look great, all of them, all of them, right? From the Illumina, ABBV, um, Bristol Myers has looked good. You know, they, they've all looked good. Some of them have had ridiculous runs too. Lily, does she cool off Lily? Yeah, a little bit. Like, look at these rips. You know, so that's why, like, BHC is more of my cup of tea here. You know, this egg didn't hatch yet. You know, some of the other names, the hot names, they've had killer run. Now, I mean, you see the move on that now? Look at this. All right, there's a lot of names. A lot of names. A lot of names. All right, even some of the dogs that are just happen to be in the right spot, this stitch fix has looked constructive with a lot of flow. There's, there's just a lot, guys. There's a lot. But, you know, we again, we don't, we don't want to come in. You don't want to just, all right, oh, we're bullish. Uh, Sharpies are long, and let's, let's buy shop at the tippy-tippy top. You, you don't, you don't want to do that. You know, you don't want to do that. Or S-E. You know, look at me. You know where I sold SE? You don't want to know where I sold SE. So I bought SE here, I think it was. And I sold it right here, the Niner. <laughs> right here. That's where I sold SE. You know? So I'm not going to come in and buy SE here now. You know, I'm not going to buy SE now. I can't do it. Plus, I don't even know how clean the action is now because SE, this is where the initial activity was. That's why, you know, some of us who played it got long, right? Oh, SE went quiet, had a little correction. Call buyers dried up. There was some put buying mixed in over there. And then all of a sudden, Jan sweepers stepped on the gas coming out of this little breather. You know? So now we see SE sweepers every day, every day. We don't know who's rolling. We don't know what the hell's going on here. Some people are selling equity and replacing it with calls because they want to take principal risk off the table. Yeah, SE's going to have puts up here, of course. Let's say I'm long SE. Let's say I was still long, Todd, right? Let's say I was long from this here. Okay, I don't want to sell it. I still got time. I own Jan calls, which I did. Okay, I'll buy some puts. No, protect my downside a little bit. I could stay in the position and I buy some insurance. You know, so that's what you see in these things. It's not as clean anymore. PDD 
the China stuff scared me off. Otherwise, he, how much action he caught, it's not even funny. Caught more action than SE. You know? But yeah, there's, there's a lot of names. Take two, you guys are mentioning. I was in two different lines in take two. You know? And the same thing. I had a niner here. And I said to myself, I got some decent profit. I think I bought it here, right? I think it was this low. Um, I had some decent profit. I made the decision I wasn't going to hold through earnings. Maybe I leave a little piece. But I decided, nah, I'm just going to sell it all here. I had as a niner. Next day or two, dipped. I was like, oof, what a good move that was. <laughs> They always, they always try to make me feel good. They, they always do this right after I sell. To make you feel, oh, good move. And then, hmm. Holy Jesus. They always do that to me. Always. Make me nuts. ATVI. That, that honestly, that caught probably better action than the take two. I owned take two because uh, I like, for some reason, I like the stock better than ATVI, trading it in the past. But ATVI net net probably had better looking flow than take two as a whole. ATVI has had some good looking sweeper activity. You know, here's another group, right? You hear the lingo, oh, it's only four stocks that take the market higher every day. Here's a whole other group that's been strong as nails, bulls, whatever. There's a lot. But again, I'm at this, in the same breath, I want to make the point, this is not, not where we want to be looking for to repeat this move, okay? If you see ATVI, some sweeper activity into this, okay? And you say, you know what? I got, I'm, it's into the lower end of the range here, and I'm going to play it to the top end of the range or a break of new highs. That's my trade. That's, the, for me, that's the most I would look at ATVI right now for. But, you know, a lot of people like to say, oh, look, see this move? That's what I'm looking for again. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Well, if it if it goes higher from here, you're gonna see these things go down, up, down, up, that type of thing, you know. So you want to be careful where you buy these things. Yeah, I, that John, that's what I would like to see. But I'm not just gonna start buying stuff on my own. In other words, I want to see sweeper activity. They're showing me that they're ready to buy these things. You understand? In other words, I'm not just going to go and, and buy all those beaten up names and hope that they rally. Like, I, I want to see legitimate buying come into them um, for me to do that. Otherwise, you know, I just, I'll trade them, actively trade them off the spec action that we see. Like, for example... Okay, there's been a handful of those names that caught real action. Okay, McDonald's, right? Remember that big bet? Um, the one today that had the day, what's that? Or AAP? And the two, I sold those two. The two that I'm still holding, Boeing, September's, I'm in them. And trip. Ooh. All right, so th those are the names that caught real action. All right, somebody who knows a lot more than us is taking a position in. But you know, this we just went we just went through how many names on the other side that look so good in court action. You know, the that's nothing. You're talking about four. Little names here. You know, we want to, I mean, if they like these things, they would come in and tattoo Caterpillar, they tattoo Deer, URI, they tattoo. 
you know, when we see action in these things, we're seeing shorts getting squeezed. We're not seeing bets on the names. Uh, I'm not in leaps. I'm in BHC Jans. You might consider them leaps. But BHC, I'm in Jan calls. Yeah, Wendy's. They got breakfast now, Wendy's, and um, stock's been hot. ENPH, I mean, it, that's just an animal, you know? That's not a bull, oh my God. Strong names. Strong names. So, you know, listen, maybe there'll be a point where these things take a breather and we'll see legitimate rotation into all the other stuff. You know, we've been, people have been saying it for a long time now. All the money, you see like Sharpies getting along, all the this sharp money that did come into this market and buy the lows, they bought all the new economy stuff. You know, they bought all the stuff with high growth that's going to grow their earnings and revenue no matter what this economy looks like when it comes out of this virus thingy. You know, some of the other stuff, you don't know. Nobody knows. Airlines, right? Nobody knows. Like casinos, right? They're opening up. So some people are getting a little excited, getting a little bullish, but you don't know. What, a, what happens to uh, outbreak in one of these casinos? Hotels. You know what I mean, John? So these big guys aren't – they don't want to park – not many anyway. You have Ackman doing it. There's not many who want to park big money in these things. It's not like um, uh, they, we're going through a recession, two bad quarters, and then maybe you know, things start to turn around. You don't know. You don't know. Right? You don't know what the future looks like. Maybe, maybe it's more time. Maybe as we get into the fall and we're closer to a possible vaccine or something like that, Maybe that's where you'll see, you know, big money start to pour into these things. Maybe sooner, but they're just not doing it yet. And you can't blame them. You know, you can't blame them. Why, why do it when a name like D-Dog is going to report ridiculous growth in the virus? You know? And not only that, they benefit off the virus, right? PayPal. Forget the banks. This is the new financials right here, right? These are the new financials. Squares, all this stuff. So that, that's where all the hot money went. They're all in the new economy stuff. But a lot of these things are cooked right now, guys. You know, a lot of these things have come a long way. So we, we got two choices. We actively trade them. Right, that word tactical, we, we trade them tactically off pullbacks and dips, all right? Or we wait for some rotation. I'm okay. I don't mind playing them off dips. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's say right, right where we're on now, okay? This MDB, you don't want to touch it here, but, you know, the market comes in, chops around a little bit, and you get a pull like right here, MDB. Right, or something like that. And then you got some sweeper activity that comes back into these things. Right? That's okay now. We got an entry here for a trade. You understand? We got an entry for at least a trade. So that's that's what we're waiting on. You don't want to buy here and then get caught in sideways or a pull. You don't want that. Can they just keep going higher? Yeah, but... You know, you the odds of that is you're going to get caught in that pull before you sell it for a profit. That's usually how it works. Right, risk-reward, exactly. It's all about risk-reward, right? Do you think you can make enough money on the upside before the breather comes? At least the breather, right? Before the breather comes, do you think there's enough upside? For me, automatically, when I look at these things, I say no. You know, I say no. Like a name like Twitter is different for me, you know? 
because it's in breather pretty much. All right, so for me, the upside on Twitter is worth hanging out in this range. Now, there's a possibility uh, money moves from the hot stuff to names like Twitter. What's Snap been doing? Snap was hot for a little bit. Breathing. Some stuff, some stuff is breathing. You know, so that's good, right? AMD had a nice breather. The semis, that's what we were talking about Sunday. The semis actually are looking okay. Micron. LRCX. These things look good. They look good. Roku. Yeah, Roku came in too, right? Uh, Roku's more sideways than anything else. But that's my point there. You know, you had a nice run Roku. And here's your little breather. So you want to look for action in Roku. You want to look for sweeper activity in Roku. And if you like Roku, that would be your entry. DKNG, uh, I haven't looked at that. I know it's still catching flow, but that thing was fried, no? Let me see. Oh, pfft. The hell you want me to do with this thing? You see all the pink on my screen here? This is an IPO. See, these IPOs can, they're a little different, right? There's no, there are no sellers in it. They can go further than you think, but that doesn't mean I would chase them anyway. But I've seen IPOs go bananas. NEE, -E, that's a utility, right? Yeah, I would like to see a nice bet there, but yeah, that looks good. The utilities, I think, were one of the few sectors that weren't overheated before this last poll. You know? PD, yeah, that, that looks interesting to me. It's had a nice run. Um, but you scroll back, you know what I mean? And here's earnings June 5th. That's kind of the problem there. What about team? Is that breathing team? Eh, they're still up at highs, you know, they're all up at highs here. They're all glued to highs. Target had earnings. Oh no, earnings tomorrow, Target, Todd. Earnings tomorrow. What uh, anybody have any healthcare biotech names? I, I got so many healthcare names I would like to see action. I like this one, CNC. I would look INO that court action again, repeat action. We've been talking about this name a lot. INO, a lot of flow there. Yeah, BHC, I'm in already. I know I'm not in, I don't think I've, I've ever been, no, I've never been in INO for a swing. Just I've day traded it. Catches a lot of action. Uh, Bristol Myers, yeah, every time I look, it's like I want a breather. It hasn't been enough. See, so you got another niner there again now. But, you know, you catch a dip here, look for action. Kind of like this, you know. I was hoping this dip would hang out. Like this is this is like what I want, right? This is it here. See this? CNC. All right. So in other words, if you missed the run or you played it and you got out, boom. Exhaustion signal. Here's your beautiful breather. Like this is textbook. Textbook. So now ideal, ideal scenario here. You want to stay near the bottom of this range for entries. And if they sweep, that would be it. So in other words, the best of both worlds would be this comes down, sweeper activity. Okay? Why? Because, again, that whole probability thing we went over earlier, 
okay? At least you might get a trade out of it, and maybe you get lucky and she busts out. You understand? But that's a trade. Like, let's say you bought here. To here, that's a trade if you want it. Or cushion, however you want to frame it. AMRN. That caught some action again today. I haven't looked at it. Oh, this thing been beat up, huh? This is, it catches, you know what the problem was with AMRN, Jim? Now it catches too much flow. So I can't like distinguish the good from the bad. There's always flow in AMRN. Always. Yeah, this thing once upon a time caught a lot of action and was a strong stock, but I guess it had news like every other biotech. How about SRPT? Anybody still hanging around in that beast? That's the beast right there. SRPT. Or NC? VRTX, that's another animal, VRTX. Wow. Wow. These are biotechs. S-R-N-E, that's old news now for me. You know what I mean? That ain't hatched. BCRX, same thing, John. I know it's not as big as a run, but late now, you know? This thing was down here catching action dead. That's where you needed to pull the trigger. Now up here now, it's on a lot of screens, believe it or not. Nobody was even acknowledging this thing down here. Yeah, there's been there's been sweeps. That's the but that's kind of the problem with a lot, you know what I mean? You're once these things get hot, you're going to see sweeper activity. You're going to see it. Okay, you know, maybe it generates enough momentum for a trade, quick trade but you can't treat it the same way. You know, you can't treat in the initial activity at $1.50 and two bucks the same way as, you know, five bucks. You can't do it. That's the problem. That's what I'm saying. Like SE, all these names, you're going to see, I promise you, you're going to see flow. These, this name is on a lot of people's radar now. You know? People are in it. People are hedging. People are rolling when they're dead, quiet. And then you start to see an uptick in sweeper activity. That's where you want to get That's where the sweet spot, the best risk reward is. Tankers, yeah. I was just waiting on earnings. I think one more has earnings. No? NAT? Did they report? NAT. Oh, it's done? Yeah. So yeah, without a doubt. If you see action there, if you like it, without a doubt. Definitely. That was the uh, problem. Earnings, besides the little run-up they had, earnings were the, uh, the problem. You know, you can't trust the flow. But now, yeah. Definitely. APT. Yeah, that's kind of old too. But again, for a trade... It was, you know, a lot of people, not a lot, but quite a few people had a decent trade out of it. I think Tim had a nice trade out of it, you know? So it depends what you're looking for, you know? It depends what you're looking for in these things. M-O-H, that's Molina Health, right? Yeah, I'm starting to breathe a little bit here. Look at, look at all these stocks you guys are telling me about. I, a lot of these stocks, look how good they look. The gold miners we haven't even discussed, right? And they've been on fire. That's another group you can add. All right? I'm no gold miner guy, so don't ask me about gold miners, but I can tell you based off flow, there's one name that's seen the sharpest activity. It's this one, FNV. I have no idea who they are. I have no idea what they do. All right, but FNV two sharp looking missiles. You know, and then the usuals, right? Puff puff pass. This thing, every dip they buy, P A A S. Uh gold, which is barrack, always sees action. 
these things have been seeing action for a while. I think Lotto uh, from the room likes AG. That sees action. I'm not a big gold miner uh, guy though. But you know, I could tell you off the flow itself, you know, it, again, this eight hatched, but FNV, that was good looking activity in that thing. KL, that catches action from time to time. That actually looks not decent. KL, Kirkland. Wasn't this a hot one? Yeah, this was hot once upon a time. I remember this. INSG, that's the 5G play, right, John? I heard that cooled off a little. They had a sick run. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's what I'm talking about, John, you know? Big rip. You don't want to chase into that pink. Risk reward is pus. Here's your breather. Here's your breather. Jason, honestly, all the semis, that's my favorite sector, the semis. I love the semis. Always have loved the semis. You know, when they catch flow, they can move, you can get paid. Those things are no joke. Um, I think you're, it's prudent to wait on NVIDIA. It may backfire, but I think you wait on NVIDIA, let that get out of the way, and I think you keep your eyes open for flow. Not, not because NVIDIA might shit the bed. You just can't trust the flow because of NVIDIA earnings. You know, they may be positioning for NVIDIA earnings. So once NVIDIA gets out of the way, you start to look at the flow. Like LRCX is my favorite. This thing's a beast. Uh, Micron, obviously, is always good. AMD, uh, the NXPIs of the world, uh, Texas Instruments. I love them all. I love them all. Right, yeah. The majority of these things, you're right, John. The majority of these things, if you see sweeper activity off pullbacks, you can tactically trade these things. Like John makes a point on AMD. Every dip they buy, and you can make money. You know, it's chasing the rallies that get you in trouble with these things. A lot of good, especially you option players, a lot of good comes out of buying pullbacks, guys. You don't realize it. A lot of good can come out of buying pullbacks when you're finding entries on options. When you chase green, that's where they rob you. That's where it's a mess. All right, anybody have any last questions before we wrap it up? Otherwise, I can sit here to midnight talking symbols. Seriously. Good copper. I, the only thing I know is F, um, FCX. That's the only one that catches flow. And it's been seeing a little bit of action. Nothing major, but a little bit of action. Uh, so we'll see. We, we want to see guys, we want to see them get really aggressive in this stuff. Otherwise, we'll just let, you know, wait for the setup. Just wait for some of the good looking stuff. Uh, to cool off. I haven't seen any SCCO flow, no. It actually looks pretty good, right? FCX is the one that catches a lot of flow. I saw a little Alcoa flow, you know, down here. It could be shorts, just worrying about a squeeze. But we'll see. Otherwise, just wait for some of the good-looking stuff out there to cool off a little, even if we just trade them, you know? We'll be patient. But we got, we're holding on to some long stuff. We're okay. Everything is beautiful. All right? More importantly, stay healthy. Stay safe. Good luck the rest of the week. All right? And I'll talk to you guys. Thanks for stopping by, guys.